So, flattening another river table, I do a lot of river tables, and what I'm starting to, what I have noticed in the past, and I'm gonna show right here is, people, these are typically coming in and they're, they're cupping this way. So why are they cupping this way? This was poured in this position in a form, and you see the epoxy all the way across the top, and it's, it, and there isn't hardly any epoxy along the whole bottom because the boards were pressed down into the form and people overfill them, they don't put a dam down the center. So that, the reason that I believe most of these river tables are, are cupping up and I'm having to pull the sides down, all the way down on both sides. You can see along each side, I put these little clamps, I hold it down to the table and I'm pulling it back down flat. I'm probably, I probably pulled each side down an eighth of an inch. So what's happening is when you, uh, there's two ways I've seen this happen. And what I'm trying to do uh, right now is I'm trying to remove, you know, the material off of each side of this river to relieve the tension that is sucking in more on the top than on the bottom. And what I mean by that is all epoxy shrinks a certain amount. It doesn't take much. And when you overfill and you have all this epoxy across the top, that is pulling in on this surface more than on this surface because there, you don't have that epoxy spread. If you flip this slab over, there's hardly any epoxy spread across the bottom. Also, when uh, I've seen guys that do multiple pours, this is poured with epoxy in one pour, which is what you want to do. If you pour in multiple pours, I've seen uh, a lot of river tables that come in here that are cupped horribly, and they, 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 they'll pour it, they'll let it sit a day, then they sand it, and they do another pour. So there's like five, four or five pours, each, each done while the other set is more cured, so that first set kind of locks it in. Then you pour another pour, that pulls it in. Then you do another pour and that pulls it in. And you do another pour, that pulls it in. And by the time it's done, I've had guys bring tables in here, they want me to flatten. And literally each corner is up an inch off the table. And it's totally unusable. Uh, so you either have to design a base to somehow suck that table back flat and do it all by hand. because There's no way you can do it on a CNC. Or I've, we've had to do this. We, you know, we've had to cut, uh, cut right down the middle, and that that happened to be on a table where there were three separate boards. We had a board, a little river, a board, a little river, and a board, and it, it bowed up so bad we cut it right in half, and then it was glued back together, and then uh, flattened. Um, so, well, actually, we cut it in half, flattened both sides. And then he went back and glued it back together flat and it stayed flat. So just just to note, the tables where guys uh, do a little, they do a little bead of, uh, of uh, silicone to keep the epoxy from spilling over. And those tables seem to stay a lot flatter uh, because again, you don't have that massive amount of epoxy across the top uh, pulling in uh, so I don't know if that hopefully that makes sense uh, so when you're pouring your uh, river table uh, just massively over pouring it like this on the top you're gonna have a, 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 a better chance I just about fell down you better have you're gonna have a better chance of it uh, cupping and uh, I'll uh, I'll know once I do one more pass and most of this is removed off the top if it relaxes and the big thing is if it, how much it's going to spring back but I'm trying to keep this table as uh, I'm trying to keep this table as flat as possible before I flip it uh, over thanks so um, all the material all the excess epoxy has been removed and the table is flat and what I wanted to show is that I removed all my clamps that were really pulling down on the um, far corners because this was cupped almost a quarter of an inch and I flattened it and I removed all my clamps 
and you can see that there's no spring back whatsoever. So what basically is that proving is that pouring these epoxy tables and having an excess amount of epoxy spill over on each slab, as it shrinks, it's pulling in on the top and creating a lot of tension and it's sucking up on each slab. And so what you wanna do is you wanna pull it back down flat like what I did and then flatten the top and then, uh, you know, like in the case of this particular top, this is spalted maple, um, I, re I removed all that tension across the top. Now there's still a little bit of epoxy on the bottom, but since this was clamped down from the top to the bottom form, there's very little, if any, epoxy underneath this table. So once again, um, you know, I would stress putting a, a silicone dam along the areas where you're going to pour epoxy and try to keep it from overflowing on the top. Another thing I would recommend is these slabs were not pre-flattened. So there are some voided areas underneath where a lot of extra epoxy goes. Epoxy is expensive. So most of my customers and the tables that I do, the slabs are pre-flattened before the epoxy is poured. And you use a lot less epoxy. It's a lot easier to totally level the top when you pour the epoxy. And then when you do your little dam, it's there, you know, you don't have these low areas where the epoxy might even spill over your dam.